So wait, wait, you, if you have not listened to our podcast yet, they start with the bloopers. You have oh, perfect. You have, you have, okay. You have not listened to our I have podcast. Not okay. Listened to it yet. okay. It starts with bloopers. Am I like on this? <laughs> <laughs> He's wait, having a hairball. Wait a minute. Wait. wait. I'm mm-hmm. gonna. I want it. <laughs> Dig yourself it's out. Spiked one. Okay. It's spiked coffee. I've been building an empire. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, she's a little busy. No, I, I, no, wait. I, she's what's a sad too is I'm on the road so much. So I've just started listening to podcasts, okay. yeah. and I've only listened to one podcast so far in my life. Okay. Well, now you have to subscribe to us. Oh, no, I subscribe. If, no. Okay. Oh, okay. yes. So I'm like if, building yes. up. Sorry for saying Sorry Media presents the Purr Podcast, the best podcast for feline medicine and surgery with tips, tricks, and updates for the entire veterinary healthcare team. If you're dying to know more about cats, keep on listening. Here are your hosts, Dr. Susan Little, famous cat vet and textbook author, and Dr. Yola Kirpenstein, talented surgeon and social media geek. Hi, I'm Dr. Susan Little. And Dr. Yola Kirpenstein. And where are we, Yola? We are still at VMX. Yes. And this is part two of our awesome interview yes. with the amazing <laughs> Dr. Mary Gardner. Yes. 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 yes, she did it. We all played our parts. Yes. Nice. That's awesome. okay. Good so. job. Yes, and if you listen to part one, part two is even better. Oh, <laughs> I have. Uh, you know, the, the, the great thing about this podcast specifically is that we talk about some really tough things. But we laugh really we hard. I, I know. That and I true. think, and that's, you know, for me, um, going back to being surgical oncologist, having to deal with death a lot, humor was one of the things that helped me mm-hmm. to deal with a yeah. lot of the really difficult situations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. during the situation, obviously, I was not laughing. No, no, but, no. you know, to have a little bit of laughter in your life is, is so It's awesome. a healthy thing. It is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Mary, wonderful that you're here. Yeah, Thank I know. You. I'm psyched. Thank you. <laughs> so, I, I'm so glad. Um, I know, you know, I know enough about lack of love to know that that really is your hallmark. That you you have a wide variety of techniques that you can adopt to the situation. And so, uh, I have two cat practices in Ottawa, and we do in home euthanasias. We didn't tell her about the D word. She hasn't used it yet. No, but so. That's true. The, the, the other species? Yeah. 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 I, d- I used it once saying that a lot of the families have large dogs that can't move. Oh, oh, did. oh yeah. that's the second one. Oh, yeah. Because well, every we didn't time when you. you do it, you have to buy us a drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so. I, actually, I, I don't know why you're wanting that. <laughs> I think yeah. it's a better policy. You I shouldn't know. tell them. And then, oh, buy BT dogs. Yeah. Yeah. But you were asking a question, so yeah. I didn't interrupt you. Sorry. Yeah. Now I've lost my question. No. So we do a lot of in-home euthanasias, and I just had to learn on the fly that some cats get intraperitoneal injections, right? Be- intracat sometimes. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's an intracat. I, I remember what the cat that taught me that. I've done that. Yeah. It was it's, a black cat on the floor under a bed. That you, like you have to. Some, and and there's nothing wrong with there's that. There's wrong nothing. With it. It's how you explain it, which is what everybody mm-hmm. freaks out over. So yeah. when I'm lecturing on euthanasia and the, the alternate rights, I don't even like to call it alternate routes. No. I'm just like there are routes. There yeah. there are routes, and here they all are. One of them is IV. One of them is this. One of them is that. And so what to, about oral? Yes. You, oh, so tomorrow I'm talking on aggressive pet euthanasia, mm. and so oral absolutely is mm. super easy. So you can um, you should just squirt it in. I have done that on a on like a feral cat, you yeah. know, and I'm like, oh, you're just, and to you're just I'm like, splash it over the cat, <laughs> right? I'm like, intra- yeah. shower, yeah. Yeah. so and it works. Mm. Um, but I have put it in food, and so typically that other species, um, when they're when they're highly aggressive, it's not. So if I have a super old dog, I'll buy it for you. If I have a super old dog yeah. that's that's got mobility issues and he's an aggressive dog. I could, I could handle that because he can't move from yes, me, yes. right? And he, and he could I could work with that. Right. Then there's those dogs where I'm, I'm and or cats that I'm, I'm euthanizing because of aggression, yeah. where they're a seven year old dog yeah. that's you know has killed animals in the home or yeah. you know whatever, right. and I'm scared of them. Right. What about an animal with rabies that you're suspecting rabies? Then we have to do what we have to do mm-hmm. if even in the clinic. Mm-hmm. So all the tests. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what so I'm talking about. Because that's a, that's a regulatory that. issue. Mm-hmm. Yes, no, right. no, so I will that, euthanize the pet yeah, and then we have to do the testing. In the clinic? Uh, how do in the you, home? You, no, but I mean if you suspect a rabbit dog. Okay, if I suspect a rabbit dog, because whether or not it's like Cujo coming at mm-hmm. me or it's a dog that never was, was vaccinated and, and bit somebody or whatever, I'll still euthanize them and then we have to send them off for tests. They're... they're Dare I say their head? Uh, sure. Okay, their head off for testing. Yeah. 
But in that case, when they're really aggressive. Okay, this is what, my favorite one. Mm-hmm is the oral route. So okay. either I will inject it in the, the euthanasia solution into a hot dog, a steak, I've done a hostess cupcake, <laughs> oh. and they'll eat it. You could also inject it into capsules. And so I'll do like two or three times the normal amount that yeah. I would do, yeah. mainly because I just want to make sure some gets some in. Some gets in. So I remember I, I gave a lecture on this, and someone mm-hmm. in the audience, it was a veterinarian, she's like, but what if they die? And so I'm like, <laughs> that's the point. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's the time. Come. But to be honest, it was actually, it's actually very nice, right? So, so they will eat like an aggressive. Oh, that was my point. An aggressive DOG. Yeah. If, we'll if they want to kill me, yeah. they have enough energy to actually eat. Yeah. Mm. It's, let's yeah. say a 14-year-old, you know, aggressive cat that's yeah. sick and yeah, like yeah. they're that's not stuff. eating. Like, they no. won't eat. But because yeah. when I'm euthanizing because of aggression, they've got enough and therefore they eat. And I tell the owners not to feed them uh, for a few hours oh, or a okay. day or whatever. Right. So I come all so loaded can, up like, with my stuff. Throw a hot dog at them. Yep. Right. So it does take longer, though. I don't think that a rabbit dog may eat. I'm not totally sure. I mean, if you're talking, they're like oh, foaming yeah, and stuff no, like that. That's no, good. that's I'm not even going near that. That's mm-hmm. different. But but I've euthanized plenty of unfortunately aggressive animals, yeah. and so that's the technique I do. And or you can inject it in capsules and give it to them. But you have to like have ten minutes because they start yeah. to melt and like gets sticky. Um, so then they'll eat it. But what's nice is it's it's you know they want to kill me, so I let them yeah. be. I step outside and they chill. Yeah. And then, like, in 20 minutes, they they, they start to yeah. It's like a buzz. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. after the wine that I'll, yeah. or whatever I'm going to buy you because yeah. I said it a few times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then... It's kind of a gentler it's thing, a, too, it's isn't it? It's actually very gentle. gentle. Yeah. And if you yeah. think about it... And so then, usually within 45 minutes, they'll either be sedate enough that I can give more sedation safely. Right. Sedate enough that then I just euthanize them. Right. Or, or they have passed. Yeah. And so... Yeah. And it's... And I tell you, the owners are like, thank you so much. Because they didn't want to bring that Cujo in. I know. All just... stressed them out. Yeah, and, yeah. and everybody in the clinic's then all stressed. And yeah. here I go, I throw some yeah. hostess cupcake at them, and it's yeah. perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You don't but... want their last memory to be that hor- horrible event, right? You've at least made it a little bit kinder. A little regional. bit kinder. So yes. you learned all this um, on the job. On, on the job. We have mm-hmm. a wonderful, of course, group of veterinarians that we share our ideas with and everything. There's also a, a hospice organization that, that we belong to. So it's the um, IAHPC, yes, yes, uh, yes. International Association of Hospice. Oh, that acronym. There. You we'll, like that? Mm-hmm. It's horrid. Mm-hmm. And, we'll put a link on our okay, uh, podcast page too. too and so we go there and they have, a, they have a wonderful vets that we all share this information. So PO is, has been a route that's been forever. So it's nothing that we necessarily that's invented. Right. But like the host's cupcake technique, like that I should one. trademark you, that. You I, 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 like, I like that. I like that for sure. Yeah. So uh, It's also nice getting like a cupcake. Yeah. Like that. yeah. Nice. It's, it's kind of nice. And let's yeah. reemphasize if you are suspecting the rabbit animal. You <laughs> You're back on this he's, rabbit thing. No, no, I just want to finish it off because I think that part. you have to... We follow all the rules. Yes. All the rules. All the that, rules. That is the main thing. Are you worried because I didn't like public health? Is that why? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, yeah. So I didn't pay yeah. attention okay. there. That but was here, now, here's here's a tricky situation, yeah. okay? You've got an older cat, yes. right, that has not been to... You like how I... Yeah, I know, very good. Okay. Well done. Uh, so, yeah. I, so you've got... And they've not uh, been to... A, their, their yes. doctor in 10 years, and right? They're and they're not vaccinated. Mm-hmm. You go to euthanize or sedate them or put in a catheter river and they bite the person that's yes. holding them. Yes. Yes. That's a potential yes. rabies case, unfortunately. Yes. We is. know that that and cat probably, case, oh right. yes. Now you know that cat probably does not have rabies. Right. Yes. But you've got to now do testing. And how do you tell the owner, BTW, mm-hmm. this is what I have to now do. And it's my fault because I didn't hold properly or whatever it may be. And I'm not saying that they fit the owner, but they fit somebody yeah. in the situation. Yeah. So I always worry about that yeah. because, yes. you know, yeah. most, most, you know, when cats are in, in pain from a arthritis or just icky feeling sure. from their sickness, they're more sensitive to anything we everything. do, right? Sound, every sight, handling, and everything. And heat, cold, a, a teeny weeny insulin needle. Wow! I know. And that's where lap of love comes back then too because probably the expectations of the owner might be different than how far you want to go with these kind of things. So how do you deal with that? With In what aspect? Like so for instance, the owner wants to hold it. Oh, you know, right, like close know. to her face specifically. I know. <laughs> I'm right. On them. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it is hard. So so a lot of times, you know, how you say things is so important, like with the different person too. Mm-hmm. And, and I can read a room fairly well. And so I, I know when I have to be very quiet or I can be jokey or something like that. So it might be where I'm like, she may tell me her opinion on it. So why don't I hold her while I do this, you know? Mm-hmm. And then and then I'm going to give her back. She's going to be still totally awake, yeah. and I'm going to yeah. give her right back, back to you, you for love. 
And so you just have to let them know this is the best for them. Or if they insist on holding them, then I make sure there's a towel in between and I've kind of given them a little kitty taco situation and have done my best. Um, <laughs> the cats tend to react to the sedation. Yeah. And um, so, but sometimes it's helpful then I'm like, I got it in there. Yeah. Right. I just got it in. I got it. I got it in. You got it's, it in a cat. I got it in the cat because yeah. they're usually like four pounds by the time I see them. This it's is so the thing. sad. That I don't like. Cats are amazing at mm-hmm. uh, being holding on to life. Yeah. Yes. To be okay with what they, they got. got yeah. you're, you're down to a, a, a pound, a whisker, and a meow. <laughs> if the, uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's true. I I was at I was at the pet store getting getting some food for my other critters, mm-hmm. and I am a sucker for an old cat, right? Like mm-hmm. I don't I love kittens, mm-hmm. but I want an old cat, right? Mm-hmm. And so there was this old tiger boy sitting in the cage, and I was like, mm-hmm. 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 you know. <laughs> and then I read the chart, and it's like he's getting fluids every other day, and I'm like, he's got kidney failure. <laughs> like, who's gonna adopt this guy, yeah. right? And so I'm like, I will. And so and he, I was like, I was like, I really want a lap cat. Is he a lap cat? And they're like, oh yeah. So I'm like, so I adopted him. His name is Bodie, and I, um, Bodie. it was. He's an angel now, oh. a year now. So I was, I was like, you know what, Bodie, I'll give you like, four, you know, four months probably, and I'll hospice you, and mm-hmm. then you'll say goodbye on my lap instead of this, you know, pet yeah. store, you know, whatever. Yeah. And it wasn't a pet store like selling; it was a, um, you know, cats in need were there yeah. to like, yeah. you know, for right. rescue, a rescue, right. was rescue. That. Anyway, um, yeah. So Bodie lived like three years, of course, right? Of course. Of course. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like all there was like fur, right? And I'm like, what happened? Right. So they could live for a long Bodie time. Go? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, it's just his eyeballs and like fur, and. So they can right live to the yeah. last. I mean, I think they just deal with their with their situation so wonderfully. Well, good on you for adopting. And my daughter just uh, last year adopted two ten year old cats from the oh, Humane. Who does awesome. that? Who like, does it? Like no, I love does that. it. And as as she's adopting them, um, the adoption counselor says to her, "It's a good thing your parents are veterinarians." You know, right. just oh, saying. Right. Be yeah. <laughs> and sure enough, the first time I met them, whole mouth extractions. You oh, know, right. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I just, yeah. I love the oldies. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm they're wonderful I'm, cats. They're, too. One, they're right. They're so, so good. Much, do you know? I think it was American Humane had an amazing TV campaign at one time about adopting senior pets, mm. and it just highlighted like the personality. You know, the sometimes like the tricks they know. Yes. They had a really good campaign. On I want pets. to. I want to like donate money or have a day or a month or whatever it is to pay for the don- of the adoption fees or whatever. Of, uh, like just a, for senior. I want even geriatric pets. Mm. Like like almost dare I say double digits like, or more. Like yeah, because it was an empty the shelters day. Mm-hmm. So like, I would I would love to pay for that do. adoption fee so that mm. way they get they they can. I mean, it's, you know, whatever it is, it's not that much, but it's just to encourage and help to get them the word out there. I like that idea. And I love the old cats and, um, I, I just, they just want a lap to lay on mm. or a sunbeam to lay on. And yeah. like, they're so great. So I went the other day, I went like four months ago to go adopt another one. Right. And I was like, oh, I'm old enough. and there wasn't anybody old enough. No. <laughs> they were like, I'm like, oh, they're all kitten for you. I, yeah, I know. I'm like, no. no, that's, I mean, I was like looking for the Charlie Brown Christmas tree. You know, I'm like looking for the old ratty one. And I'm like, they're all looking too healthy. Very few adoptive owners go in looking. I'm for looking for the hot yes. mess. Aged right. right. animals. I want aged animals. And so, anyway. I love it. The Wind Feline Foundation has been funding cat health studies for 51 years. If you have a cat or have ever treated a cat, nearly everything we know was once funded by this nonprofit totaling about $6.5 million. From understanding retroviruses, FELV and FIV, to more recently targeting gene defects responsible for HCM in the Ragdoll and Maine Coon breeds. The Wind Feline Foundation Pet Memorial Program offers veterinary professionals an opportunity to reassure clients that their beloved cats have not been forgotten. And those dollars support health studies that benefit the lives of all cats. Contributions totaling $150 or more receive a certificate suitable for framing or display in your clinic. Imagine being able to treat kidney disease more effectively, using stem cell therapy to cure stomatitis, or drugs to treat FIP are actually within grasp. Consider your support in telling your clients about the Win Feline Foundation and a free newsletter at winfelinefoundation.org. Yeah, anyway, so, so you, let's go back to okay. the euthanasia part. So <laughs> let's the, go back the, to death. The yes. importance 
of oh. sedation. <clears throat> Oh, you just, I'm on a soapbox now. Mm-hmm. Is that all right? I knew it. I, I, I know. Go for it. I know. Okay, so although sedation is technically not necessary mm-hmm. because our euthanasia solution is really, you know, mm-hmm. anesthesia, if you will, yes. mm-hmm. um, it is so vital. Not only is it for the pet relaxing, mm-hmm. for the owners it's relaxing. And I can't tell you how many times I hear an owner say, this is the best sleep he's had or right. he looks like he's so or comfortable it's the best cuddle I've cuddle had. like right he's and yes. you just they feel the cat just like relax then because yeah. they're mm-hmm. all like yeah. tense especially yeah. in the clinic too but even yeah. in the home and just mm-hmm. they relax and they're and they're not you know just tensing or anything like that it's mm-hmm. so nice it's very nice for me as a doctor that i have that phase also just mm-hmm. because it is emotionally taxing to euthanize pets and whether it's all day long like we do or once a week mm-hmm. to see a, a, a live alert animal go from that stage in to, to, to in, in, in seconds, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. it's taxing on me. Yeah. So I like to see them in a, in a, in a medium stage. If you're in a, in a mid, in, you know, middle stage where they're sleeping yeah. and it, it just helps me to be able to do it well. And um, so I love that. It also allows me to, to do how we do it where we never remove them from the, from the owner's arms or space, you know, yes. whether it's a space, I don't need to have them in their lap all the time, but there's mm-hmm. space and, and, um, I, I wouldn't want to always take them to the back. It's scary. Mm-hmm. There's loud noises. They're uncomfortable. So mm-hmm. why can't we do things in front of an owner? And sedation allows that really easily. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's so much more peaceful for everybody. And technicians can, can uh, they've had a lot of um, just emotional battles with doing so many euthanasias also. So if you could see that, that stage. I spoke at, at North Carolina um, maybe three months ago. I was with Sheila, actually. And this woman comes up to me afterwards and I did my whole you know that's and that's also like I get a lot of flack when I'm talking about mm. sedation and then like not going to the back and all this like everybody gets all worked mm. up about it. it's like my time mm-hmm. where they stop liking me I'm like don't yeah. worry <laughs> stop can you remove re- review me before we talk <laughs> and then, yeah. but anyway so this woman comes up and she starts crying and she's like I work for it for a doctor and the, that doctor she will not allow sedation and she says because she she feels that there's no side effects side effect bene, benefits from sedation that she doesn't get the side effects. What she's talking about, of course, is the agonal breath, the vomiting, the seizures, oh. like the medical side effects from. She doesn't see it with her euthanasia I protocol. See. So she doesn't. So why, feel the therefore, need. why? So mm-hmm. that's the only. That's it. That's the only black and white switch for her. It's yeah. Okay. So this poor girl's crying in front of me because she's like, I can't stand this. Right. And I said, did, have you talked to her about it? So she's like, yes. And she won't change. I'm like, did you cry in front of her like this? And she's <laughs> like, no, I said, you might need to, yeah. to show her the emotional impact it's having on you. Yeah. It's not about the side effects. It's, it's not. About, it's no. about the experience. Yeah. It's the experience. It's the whole experience. Yeah. yeah. So we can make it better. So sedation is, I think medically should be necessary. Yeah. Um, if not required when appropriate, <laughs> And the experience yeah. provides is so great. I think it's very jarring for an owner too that their pet is is one moment alive and one moment dead. Hundred percent. There's no transition. There's just and it no needs transition. to be a, like I think five minutes is the average, which is great. Um, there are a lot of doctors that use propofol, which mm-hmm. is um, so fast. So it's a it's an injectable mm-hmm. in the vein, so yeah. they must have now a catheter in place before right. they've sedated. So right. now you and that's the other touchy subject. But um, also, it's so fast. It's, fast. it's instant. So to an yeah. owner, they think it's dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and it's it, not a pretty it's, sedation. No, no. You know what I mean? It's like no. it, they go, but they're not laying there like yeah. sleeping. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. unconscious. So, and, and, and I think from a, from a technical standpoint, and this is probably a question that you will get quite a lot too, I think a lot of veterinarians are afraid because they're taught you have to get an IV catheter in, and if you sedate them, suddenly the veins are gone, and then I can oh, find it, and then I have to yeah. struggle. And you know, yeah. we started this podcast because we get the questions all yeah. the time. All, all, yeah. like, oh my yeah. Yeah. And all so, so um, I think, like I said, I'm a surgical oncologist, so as a matter of fact, 50% of the time, I was euthanizing animals. Yeah. yeah. And so to tell people about the fact that you can do it different ways mm. is so important. So, What's your answer to the the IV yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. So yeah, everybody will ask me that, like you know, and and oh, I see your sedation's got ace. Doesn't that lower the blood pressure? Whatever. I'm like, listen, they're already in a depressed state. Yes, they're they're already you start that way up yeah, already. Yeah. yeah, and I have not had the problem. Like, I think my percentage of problems will will be there with or without sedation. Mm. And so we are doing a study at Lapa Lab because our 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 
our numbers are so high. And you study have a giant people. Excel spreadsheet, mm-hmm. I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, we do. I'm sure. Sheila, Sheila and I are in yes. heaven right yeah. now. We have the numbers. So we, we took a select select few of our veterinarians to help us with the study. The ones that were very confident in what they were doing and they didn't mind, you know. And so we are looking at side effects. We're looking at, you know, body condition score, the ailments that they have, mm. um, uh, time to sedation, time to passing, all these things just to see, like, do we struggle with the vein? With with the kitty cats, most most of them are five pounds or less. They're so tiny. Yeah. So um, m- almost all of the, I would say 99.9% of those, I actually do intrarenal yeah. anyway. Yeah. So why, why am I finding this thread yeah. of a vein? Yeah. Whether I've sedated them or not, it's going to be hard to yeah. find. Yeah. Where I give it, and I know some people are not like in in alignment with that concept, but we, you know, we, we take biopsies all the time. Yeah. We do every like what yeah. it, it takes it directly, and if there's just a few nephrons, it works. And they're sedated, and, and, and they're still oh, they're 100. percent They're it's, anesthetized technically because we use yeah. ketamine. Yeah. So like yes, and it's and approved. the intrarenal one is because it's easy to find See? anatomically, yeah. or because it's yeah. easy and, and it's it's, quick. And, it's quick mm-hmm. and it's quick and and. I, I spend more time trying to get a vein mm-hmm. if I was to try to get a butterfly catheter in them than I, than I, than I can with the kidney. Yeah. I mean, it's the first time I palpated kidneys, really. <laughs> like, and these, t- 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 mm-hmm. you know, teeny weeny cats. I'm like, there it is. You know, but they have them. But they have them. But in, when you when you're when you're dealing with healthier cats and they're chunky and stuff, I'm like, I don't know what I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. There it is, a little bit. Yeah. But with these these guys, you feel them and they have them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also the owners are holding them, or they're mm-hmm. you know we're in these situations where to get an arm out is awkward. And the and oh by the way, we all go by ourselves. So and I would still ah, do this in the clinic the too. Thing. That's the other thing is we're all by, all ourselves. by ourselves. So it, it's so much easier to then do that. But you know to hold you know the back leg up to get an anyway. So it's yeah. Um, Though your question is, do I have problems? And no. And so we're we're doing a study, and we just gave Sheila all the numbers to now yeah. go digest for a year. She have she, fun. she would like to go and off so to an island and digest all this. So so as an anatomist because I'm a surgeon, so yeah, I look at the anatomy, it. Okay. so the papilla thing comes back. But, <laughs> but the kidney is there. You have Pelvis, the, you I don't have know, the spleen there. Yes, the how do I? Yes, you yes. You could have the liver. Yes. So it, I think it's it's not the. You think it is the organ that makes a difference? It's or just, just easy to palpate. Doing it I think into a it's, organ it's easy to palpate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you imagine if, if we had a little kitty's, te- you know, stuffed down, what would help? Like the owners are like loving on the face. Yeah, I can. I have a yeah. man hand yeah. too, so I was like, there it is. Yeah. You could feel it so easy. Yeah. It, it it happened so fast. So now, mm-hmm. um, as Susan was saying, she did intraperitoneal ones. Yeah. That takes a long time. Yeah. Yeah. it could take forty five minutes yeah. sometimes, and that's. That's a long time. Yeah. I euthanized my own dog uh, three years ago, and I wanted, I did not want death to happen super fast. Mm. I did not want me to inject it in her vein, and she passed right away. Mm. I also wanted to snuggle with her mm. while I was saying goodbye, and mm. I couldn't be in two places at one time. Oh, yeah. So I said, I'm going to go on an alternate route, right? Mm. And so I so I chose IP, Yeah. which in, in, in dogs, I usually do intrahepatic. Um, if I'm not going to use a vein in cats, I always find the kidney. Mm-hmm. Or, so it's so much. Sometimes I don't. I'm like, where? Oh, yeah. it's a poop ball. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. that's it. Intrafecal. I'm like intrafecal, and I'm like, that didn't work. No. So like, they're positioned weird, and I'm yeah. never going to take them out of how they are to like try yeah. to get that. So anyway, yeah, and cats with chronic kidney disease, are, they become are like, very small. Yeah. It's like a cashew. Yeah. You know, I'm like, no, no. and does it really even work? And did I go through it? Mm-hmm. So for my yeah. own dog, I actually did intraperitoneal, yeah. and so and I sat there and snuggled and. Like at minute 25, I started to get anxious and I knew that it medically she was fine. I was ready to let her go Mm. and I wanted her to go. And every minute when I thought she was gone, the breath came back. Right. And I'm like, ah, and I'm like, just go, Sarissa. Yeah. So it took her 40 minutes. So I, I now appreciate that time of length that if that's too much. Because I've had anticipatory grief. I've been thinking about this day. You know, but this is my last day, my last hour, my last 10 minutes. And, yeah. you know, and now oh, wait. Like, there's another 10 minutes. There's oh, another, wait. Oh, wait. There's there's another breath. breath, right? Okay. So I try to avoid intraperitoneal just for timing. So, yeah. so kidney is very, very fast. Yeah. I mean, it's nice. The liver is – actually, I prefer that a little bit because it's about three to five minutes. So mm-hmm. it's not super fast. Mm-hmm. But great. Yes. Thank you, yeah, thank you. you. Like We're almost at the end. I know we, you're staring at to, that yeah, number, yeah, yeah, forty-six. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, because we do normally our podcasts are about twenty, twenty-five minutes. This went long. Two. I'm sorry. No, no, you're no, two. Is two. Oh, no, you're part two. one and two. Okay. You're a two podcast. And I just, I just want to yeah. point out one thing because I love the word "lap of love," and we also have a name for our production company. What do you think it is? 
<laughs> he's the chair of care. <laughs> she's laughing. He's, I'm, I'm laughing because we made it up on the fly. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, nobody it? knows the name of our of our two person production company. company yeah. Oh, nobody. Yeah. Are you going to tell me what it is? We'll, we'll tell you. So it's a very. If you're Canadian, you'll totally get okay. it. Yes. Okay. So, so we were in Canada. We, we were in we Canada were in when we. Sorry for saying sorry. <laughs> it's very Canadian. Because you always say sorry. Because Canadians sorry, always sorry. say sorry, and then when it gets pointed out, we go, "Oh, sorry." Yes, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay. one of my very good friends lives in Toronto. She's a hospice vet, so she will appreciate that. Yeah. Too. Sorry. 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 Okay. Yeah. I, I like yeah. it. Yeah. Well, you know, Lapa Love is is a beautiful name, and, mm. and if uh, but a lot of people wonder what we are. You know? <laughs> so then they're yeah. like, "Oh no, I yeah. can see yeah. a little So if this doesn't work out, world. I got to work on my dancing skills. Right. <laughs> I, I see the pole. I, I see the pole. Yeah. Yeah. Built in plan B. <laughs> plan, this is my I exit yeah. strategy. <laughs> this is that was even smarter than I thought. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. Hey, hats yeah. off! Yeah. Yeah. It's just hats like you know, I'm loving it. That is amazing. So. I love this. This this, yeah. this is awesome. Thank well, you so I much. Hope it was We're so to excited to yeah. have you chat with us because yes. we've been waiting for a long time. Um, yes. It is a really important subject. It is. You know, yes. I know we always. I we, I knew we'd have fun talking to you, but I also knew there'd be some really good things that would come out of it. Mm. And the more we talk about it, it's so important. And right. I think, like everybody always asks, and one point that I would love for for listeners to get is that you know everybody thinks that I must be crazy or all of our doctors must be so yeah. sad to do this. Fact, to do this. Like we must be right. just these emotional wrecks. And none of us are. Yeah. I mean, we're emotional wrecks because of normal life stuff, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the the worst part of my job was not the euthanasia, but going to homes and seeing pets that had not been to their doctor yeah. in over a year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the cats are the worst. Mm-hmm. Often ye- decades. Ye- decade, right, decades. Right, decades. Decades. Years. And yeah. I'm like, we could have done something. And it's yeah. not some, like, massive, you know, right. production and bills right. and whatever. Because I right. know they're old. I know, you know, like, how much are we going to spend on this older pet? Yeah. But, they, but they've had the years of pain years of pain and discomfort yeah. when we could have even just talked to them about setting up their litter box differently, you know, mm-hmm. and like it just yeah. that's what drives me. That's nuts. probably the painful part. That's that is the painful part. So my mm-hmm. purpose is like getting those geriatrics into the clinic mm-hmm. before we ever see them. Yes, mm-hmm. good on you. Yeah. Get those get those kitties in. Yeah, yeah. That's a wonderful end. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much for being no, here. Thank yeah. You for having me. This Gosh, I think fun. you owe us like one drink. I, I think more than that. <laughs> I, I said it yeah. a few times. We'll review the. Tape. I bet he's going to edit. He's going to search so for dogs. We, we, ah, yeah. geez, uh, there we go. Another one. So no, we will look at the tape, and we have a video this time. So this oh. is different a little bit. This is this yeah. your first video? So this is the first video. Yes. You're the first one, nice. of course, I, of course. And we're we're going to make clips out of it and put it on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. So we're very excited about it. The and uh, I know the highlights, the highlight and, 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 and and the one thing I, I want to say <laughs> too bloopers. is that uh, we're almost at ten thousand downloads. <gasps> yeah, you know, like, no. our, our baby yeah. podcast is growing. Up. I know it's we're very crazy, but it's thanks to people like you. Yes. Oh no, this is Thank awesome. You. Yeah, awesome. so uh, thanks everybody. This was it. <laughs> Ta da! Ta da! <laughs> <laughs> The opinions of this podcast are those by Dr. Susan Little and Dr. Yola Kirpenstein. Veterinary medicine is a complex profession, and often there are multiple diagnostic and therapeutic options for different disease processes. If you're a pet owner with questions, please go to your local veterinarian. If you're a veterinary professional, ask your questions on our Instagram page, at her podcast. Dr. Susan Little is a feline medicine specialist with two cat-only hospitals in Ottawa, Canada. She is best known as an international speaker and as the author and editor of two textbooks, The Cat, Clinical Medicine and Management, and August, Consultations in Feline Internal Medicine. Along with three cats, she also admits to owning two dogs. And you can follow her on social media with the handle at CatVetSusan. Dr. Yurla Kirpenstein is a diplomat of the American and European College of Veterinary Surgeons and a big cat fan. His specialties range from surgical oncology and reconstruction to minimally invasive surgery. He is the author of two textbooks on basic and reconstructive surgery. Did you know he was allergic to cats? Yola works currently at Hills Pet Nutrition. You can follow him on social media with the handle at GBETSX. 